What's going on everybody? It's Aaron Cates and welcome back to the channel. Now today we're putting a leveling kit and replacing some suspension on this Ford Ranger. The 2009 Ford Ranger right now it's basically bone stock. We got some 30 inch extreme mud claws, got some 15 mite fuel lethals, got a little coloring going on, got some red emblems, red wipers, more red emblems, got some aftermarket headlights, and back here we've got all the suspension and everything that we're putting on it so we're replacing the inner and outer tie rods we got upper control arms we got sway bars and we got lower ball joints we'll be replacing all these today and we also have is it a two or three inch leveling kit two and a half inch. Uh, two and a half inch leveling kit we're putting on today i haven't seen very many of these trucks on youtube and as you guys know with the cat eye the whole reason i started this channel is because i couldn't find videos of this stuff on youtube so my buddy was like, hey man, can you help me put this stuff on? I was like, yeah, sure, why not? And then I got to looking on YouTube to see how to do everything. And there wasn't really any videos. So I was like, all right, screw it. We'll record it. We'll put it up on the channel. So if any of you guys got Ford Rangers or Mazdas, the Mazda B5400 is the same as this. And I believe Ford Explorers are pretty similar to this as well. So if you guys have anything like that and you're looking to either just replace your suspension or put a leveling kit on it, Sit back and watch, and if not, if you're just watching the channel and you want to further your knowledge on how to put stuff on, watch and I'll, I'll show you guys. All right, we've got our tires off. We're up on jack stands. I've got everything soaked in penetrating oil. To take your upper control arm out, first you want to take this bolt off, and then if it doesn't pop out, you can hit it with a hammer, hit it right around in here. It'll vibrate and push the uh, upper ball joint out. Then you've got your two bolts back here on each side. You can either get to these from inside the engine bay, or you can just do it by lifting up this little flap right here, or you can pop these rivets out that are in this flap, make your access just a little bit easier. We've got our sway bar linkage. As you can tell, this is very, very wore out. We've got a bolt up here, and there's a bolt on the bottom. You take both of those out, this will pull out. Same thing does with your tie rod. Take out your cotter pin down here, take off your castle nut, hit the side of the spindle with a hammer, pop this tie rod out, and then once that, once you have all that done, you'll have this spindle, your hub assembly, your brake rotor will be hanging, and you wanna get something to hang this off the frame because once you get your lower ball joint disconnected, this is going to be dangling on the ground, and you don't want all that tension on this brake line. So you wanna hang this off to the side. And uh, once you get all that done, I'll pick you guys back up. And like I said, just take this bolt out, whack it with a hammer until this comes out. Take this bolt out, just pull this out. Take the castle nut cotter pin off, hit it with a hammer until this pops out. And then same thing goes for the ball joint up underneath of here. Take the cotter pin out, castle nut off, hit it with a BFH. And uh, once you get your spindle off, I'll pick you guys back up. All right, so this is a good thing to show you guys. We already got the upper control arm on. We got the inner and outer tie rod replaced. I had to use some channel locks to get the inner tie rod loosened. Uh, don't do what I did, and I was turning the wrong way for a solid like five minutes, and I couldn't get it off. And I found out I was going the wrong way with it. Um, <laughs> once I went the right way, it wasn't too bad. Tied it off. And I said, we already got the upper control arm replaced. Take off those bolts back there, put the new upper control arm in. Inner and outer tie rods. Now the only problem we've had is this nut right here as you can tell the top nut is stripped out so I got another nut out of my bolt bin and we're going to weld that nut to that one because it's in awkward size I believe it's metric because my inch and one eighths is the only thing I have that will go on it and it's just a hair too big so I ended up stripping it out I tried getting off channel locks that wouldn't work so we've got a nut that I have a socket for that is a six spline socket not a 12 tooth one and I'm gonna weld this nut on all the way around and then see if we can break it free with that. I've tried the torch method with the wrench and the channel locks didn't work. So now we're resorting to this and we're gonna weld that on and see if it'll come off. Looky there. Son of a bitch. And that guys is our welded nut on there. So I can get the camera focused. There we go. Just welded it. 
all the way around and uh, she came right off. All right, we've got this side all back together. Got the leveling kit in. I'll show you guys a little bit more in depth on how to do the leveling kit with the spring compressor on this side. But right now we're getting this tire on. We're gonna put it down on its own weight over here just to get an idea of how high it's gonna be. But we've got the, it's a horseshoe style leveling kit. It goes and sits in the bottom of the lower control arm. We use a spring compressor and just compressed it all the way down with like that. We're able to stick it up in there, no problem. Got the jack on the lower control arm, jacked it up, got everything back together. Uh, took about three hours to do the side. I'm sure we could get the other side a little bit faster now that we know exactly what to do and everything. But we got a new lower ball joint in. New upper control arm and ball joint, new inner and outer tie rod, so should be like a brand new truck. And uh, got a little lift out of it as well. All right, so with the coil spring compressor, one like this, this one goes inside of the spring. You've got two little hooks that hook. One hooks on the higher side of the spring, one hooks on the lower side of the spring. Then you've got this kind of like a wide bend fork that goes in. You have the three washers that go underneath of it. And what this does is this, as you tighten it, it's going to compress the spring together. Now, you can do this without a power uh, tool. You don't have to have an impact, anything like that. I've done it with a ratchet. I've done it with a wrench. But I will say that a electric impact or any type of air impact, it does speed up the process. It does make it a lot easier. But again, you guys are messing with a spring that is under compression. And if something does come apart, it is going to hurt you. So... I'm not recommending this to anybody, but be safe, wear whatever safety protection you want, whatever makes you feel safer, but this is dangerous. Uh, all it takes is one of these things to come apart and you have a compressed spring that's it's basically like a live grenade at, at that point because there's going to be shrapnel flying when it comes apart. So guys, be careful, take your time, and all you want to do is just tighten it down and you can literally watch it compress as it tightens down. Now we have it compressed probably about three, four inches now. We have our leveling kit already in installed in the truck. Now you just want to take this, make sure you have the coil bucket cup that goes on top, and you want to put it back in. Uh, these, style, these style coil spring compressors that go up the middle, they work on trucks with IFS that has a coil spring in it because the shock will go through the center of the spring. But for a coil spring like what's on my F-150, there isn't a section where you could bring this out of the center or the top, so that's when you use outside coil spring compressors. A lot of people, you can use an outside one on this, but I find those a lot more sketchy than what these are, because at least if this comes apart, most of what's coming apart is inside the spring, and you're gonna be protected more that way. But if one on the outside comes apart, that, that's right in front of you. There's nothing slowing it down, there's nothing stopping it. So I do like using these a lot more, but if you don't have the capability of using one, like I can't use one on my Ford. Just be careful and take your time. Now we'll get the spring installed. All right guys, this is the official ride height of the Ranger. Went up a good two, probably is, it probably is a true two and a half, three inch leveling kit. It does, we got about a, about lower, about half an inch in the rear now. We're on all four tires, we're on our own weight. Getting it torqued down up here. We're all good. The side went together a lot faster. The other side took close to three hours. Did this side in just over an hour. So in all, four or five hour job and you're done. Super easy. Uh, we replaced upper control arm, lower ball joint, inner and outer tie rods, and our sway bar linkage. And we installed the two and a half level in kit. Not bad for a day's work. And now I get to work on my truck, but you guys won't see that until the next video. Now, like I said in the beginning, guys, I know a lot of you guys, you guys are here for the cat eye content. That's here, here for the Ford content, but just in case you're one of the viewers and you don't own a Cat Eye and you don't own a Ford and you own a little Ford Ranger, I figured this would help you guys out. And if it doesn't help you out, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching the video. We're going to get a couple shots of it once everything is done and cleaned up out of the way. We're going to get it out on the road and get a true look at all four sides of it and see how much better it looks. But just, just now, it already looks so much better just with that little bit of leveling kit. Now, this isn't super crazy, wasn't super expensive. What did this all cost you, just under $200? Yeah, it was uh, 
a little over 100 bucks for the suspension kit, which again came with the new upper control arm, the kind with the new ball joint, the lower ball joint, inner and outer tie rods, and the sway bar linkage. And then the leveling kit was like around 50, 60 bucks. Now, after doing this, you will have to get an alignment. Um, not only did you mess with the inner and outer tie rods, you also messed with the camber with the upper control arm, and then you installed basically a lift to it, which anytime you do anything with your suspension that messes with the geometry, such as a lift, a suspension lift, you have to get an alignment afterwards. So an alignment usually is right around $100. So just say you got 300 bucks for Christmas and you drive a little Ford Ranger, this is your way for uh, getting it lifted and getting it looking good. Now you don't have to go get any bid wheels and tires or anything like that. He had just picked these up about two weeks ago and we were putting them on the truck. We noticed that his suspension was really shot and he had want, been wanting to do a leveling kit anyway, so that gave him a reason to bite the bullet, buy the leveling kit, and buy all the suspension stuff so he's safe driving down the road. All of his ball joints, his tie rods, they were all shot, so definitely, definitely needed it. And uh, yeah, now we're gonna get some more shots of the truck once everything's all finished up, and then we'll close out this video. Okay guys, so I completely forgot to film an outro, and by the time we remembered to get some clips of the truck, it was dark outside. So I had my buddy Justin go around, just walk around the truck and show genuinely how it looks now. Uh, he said it does ride a lot better and it looks so much better. This leveling kit definitely changed the whole look of the truck. He's happy with it. I'm happy with it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and I will catch you in the next one. See ya.